Chulen Dav Kuf Bey is a good Erev Shabbos. When it comes to Eber Menachai, the Isser to eat a limb from a live animal, so there's three Shittas. You have the Shittah that says everything in the world is included. All animals, kosher, not kosher, all birds, kosher, not kosher. Then you have the Shittah that says only kosher animals. Chayas, behemoth, but kosher. Birds as well. And then you have Rameya that says it only applies exclusively to behemoths that are kosher. Not even chais that are kosher, not birds that are kosher, only to behemoths, cows, goats, sheep, etc. Where, what's the machlek? Because it says, Ki adam hua nefesh, in the Pasuk of Eber Menachai, it says that the blood, that's the nefesh, you can't eat Eber Menachai. So anything that has a isra blood, meaning all animals in the world have an isra to eat their, drink their blood, besides fish and grasshoppers, but all animals, including non-kosher animals. But Bonin say, no, it has to be achila, something that's right to be to eat, that's where you have the Isra of Eber Menachai. So meaning only kosher animals, behemoths, chayas, oifais, but kosher, those are the ones that have an Isr Eber Menachai. Now, Rabbi Huda that we had the other day that says, Isr Chal on an Isr, you could take one Isr and apply it to another Isr if the second Isr is more hummer than the first one. So you have Eber Menachai should be able to apply itself to Nevela, to a Tmea. To an animal that's not kosher. Why? Because Eber Menachai was, like Gidon Hanasha we said, was before Matan Torah, so it's a very strong Yisr. So in fact, according to Rabbi Yudha, you don't need a Pasuk to learn the Yisr of Eber Menachai on a Tomei animal. Remeir says that Eber Menachai is only in Behemoth. And why does he say that? Because two Psukim before the Pasuk of Eber Menachai, it says, Mibkarcha u so he takes that to, to say that Eber Menachai only applies to Behemoth, Bakr and Sain. Now what about a Ben Noyach? What's his Chiyuv? Says Rav, according to everybody, a Ben Noyach would be Osir in all animals. Then there's no difference between Kosher and Tomei. So Mela, all animals, all birds have an Isser Eber Menachai. Now there's a very interesting Braisa. That in one sentence, you have to split up the sentence and say the first part of the sentence is talking about a Jew and the second part of the sentence is talking about a Ben Noyach. Because it says in the Braisa that if you eat a uh, aver, one limb of a non-kosher bird, you don't get malchus. Obviously, he's talking about a Jew. A Jew doesn't get malchus for eating aver menachai from a non-kosher animal, according to this brayso. But why doesn't he get malchus for eating non-kosher? The answer is because there's not a kezais of meat, of just meat. You have a kezais total. In other words, you have a little bit of meat and sinews and bones. And together, it creates a kezais. For, for aver menachai, you'd be aver. But for Basar Tomei, you're not over for that. Then the continuation of the sentence is that there's no, the Shechita doesn't make this animal tar. Now, if you're talking about a Jew and a non-kosher animal, of course the Shechita doesn't help. Obviously, says the Gemara, that this second part of the Bryce is talking about a non-Jew, a, a Ben Noyach, and for him, Shechita doesn't do anything. In general, for Ben Noyach, if a ben was to shecht an animal, since he's not mechuyiv in shechita, he's usher to eat the animal when it's jumping around. Like a chicken without a head would be usher for him to eat, even though it was shechted. But for a Jew, it's mutter. As, lo- as soon as you shecht it, you're allowed to eat it. There's no ever menachai. But here's a big chiddush. That if you take a behemoth sheira, that for a Jew, you're allowed to eat it immediately after shechita. So for ben Noyach, because it's a kosher animal, he did shechita, he's also allowed to eat it immediately after shechita, even though shechita doesn't work for him. Why? Because there's nowhere in the Torah that, that something is mutter for a Jew and usher for a guy. I don't know if you hear that, but that's the siren here in Rabbi B'Shem is saying that it's Shabbos. We're going to have to go soon. Now, there's two psukim. One talks about Aver Menachai, a limb of a live animal. And the other talks about the Basar Menachai. So Rav says, in order to be over on Aver Menachai, you think that it's, as long as you eat, you eat an aver, even if it's less than a kezais, she so says no. You need at least a kezais, that aver has to be a kezais, but you could add the sinews and the bones to the meat in order to make a kezais. However, when it comes to an avela, meaning a kosher animal that died, so over there you have to, your aver on eating kezais, basar, and it has to be pure meat, no sinews. And the same thing when you eat basar menachai, not aver menachai, but basar menachai, meat off a live animal, 
you're only over if you eat it with pure meat and no sinews and bones. Now, a non-kosher animal, whether it's alive or dead, you chayiv either if you eat a kazayis of it, or if you eat a bria. In other words, if you take a, you eat an entire bird, a small, tiny bird that's less than a kazayis, even though it's less than a kazayis, since it's a whole bria, you're chayiv. By the way, Rashi points out that a bria is one of the, the Ran says there's three things that you need in order for a bria. One of them, and Rashi points out, is that it has to be created like that as a bria. For instance, if you're to eat an entire bria nevela, you're not chay if it's less than a kazayis. Why? Because a nevela wasn't created as a bria. The nevela happened after it died. Mashenki never meant a chay, happened when it was born. We'll skip ahead here a little bit because of the siren of Shabbos. Um, so if you eat a bird that doesn't have a kazais, it doesn't have a kazais at all. So according to Rebbe your potter, why? So Rebbe says a very interesting svar. He says, since the ivarim, the limbs, are not meant to be separated while it's alive, so if you eat all the limbs, each limb by itself is nothing because it's not meant to be separated once alive, it's meant to be separated when it's dead. So therefore, when you eat the whole bird, you potter. Says Rava, according to that, if somebody were to think in his mind that he wants to separate it, then for him it would be Asr. Even though he didn't separate, it would be Asr. So in other words, for him it's Asr, and for the rest of the world, world it's Mutter. Says Abayah, that doesn't make sense. How could something be Asr for you, and Mutter for everybody else? Then comes Rabbi Shimon Merlaz and says, that how, he says on, on Rebbe, if one Aver is Asr, so then certainly if he ate the entire bird, it should be Asr. And that Rav also says this, this uh, Cheshben of Machsheves Oichel is Oichel, in other words, if a person had in mind to eat this animal when it's dead, so in other words, he designated that he's not going to separate it when it's alive. Because Rabbi Shem says that Ivarim are meant to be separated when he's alive. But what if in his mind, he said, I'm only going to separate it after it dies. And then he ate it when it was alive. So for him, it would be the opposite. It would be potter. Because in his mind, he made it potter. And for everybody else, it's mutter, asr. Says Abayah, that also doesn't make sense. How is it possible that for everybody, it's asr. And for you, it's mutter. Have a wonderful Shabbos. I'll see you on Matzi Shabbos.